Is it hot in here? Are you feeling hot? I feel like I have island fever. Ooh, island fever. Are you thinking island life is a life cut off from the rest of the world, lacking in opportunity, isolated? Do you feel like you have to make sacrifices to live on an island? Are you worried about island fever? In this latest blog, as a retired couple, we are going to try and debunk some of the most common myths and concerns about island life. We are going to separate fact from fiction about what it's really like to live on an island. Welcome back to Track Us Down. If you're just finding us, I'm Monique. And I'm Doug. Today we are talking about island life as we share our experience in leaving North America behind and moving in retirement to this stunning island destination. Island life may just be the paradise that you've been dreaming of, whether that's for a travel destination, a holiday home, retiring abroad, or working abroad. And our island here, Madeira, is full of amazing landscapes, diverse culture, local people, expat people. It's so much fun. And for the last three years, we've called this island our home and it's been an adventure living on this island. And we are living a life here that we could never have imagined. So today we are going to tackle 10 of the most common myths and concerns about island life and set the stage for what life on an island is really like. If you like a good conversation about retiring abroad, early retirement, or just living a better second half of life, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate your input. So in the past, many people had tons of reservations about moving to an island. They were worried that it was isolated, that it was limited, or that there was a lack of amenities on an island. Some people worried that they would feel cut off from the rest of the world living on an island and that maybe the locals were very insular and would be unwelcoming. And also others would worry just about feeling trapped island fever. Additionally, traditionally, people have concerns about higher costs of living, extreme weather events, or just not having access to goods and services that you might have at your big Costco back on the continent. All those together could give pause to some people thinking about retiring or moving abroad and considering island life for that. However, it's important to note that perceptions often don't reflect the reality and that many islands have amazing infrastructure, vibrant cities, vibrant cultures, and a place where you can feel happy and feel connected to the rest of the world. So we were just like many others, just like you in that sense. When we thought of retiring, the idea of retiring to an island sounds so poetic almost. We thought of places and checked out places in the Caribbean, there's Hawaii, Southeast Asia, but some of those places, a lot of those places, seem just too remote, maybe even too laid back without the infrastructure. And that can definitely stop you from fulfilling that dream of moving, retiring to an island. But then we found Madeira. So as we dive into the 10 myths about island living, keep in mind that perceptions are often very different from reality. So let's jump in and unravel some of those misconceptions and shed light on the truths behind island life, whether that's moving abroad, retiring abroad, long stays, vacation homes, or even just traveling. So let's get into it. Myth number one, that living, working remotely, or retiring to an island, you will feel cut off and disconnected from the rest of the world. Reality, that is absolutely not true. In today's day and age with technology, of course, you can keep in contact with absolutely everyone across the world. Modern technology has changed that. It's a very old fashioned kind of thinking that an island is isolated. Beyond technology, there's also, of course, flight, and it's easy to hop on an airplane and get anywhere from an island. Especially here from Madeira, there is so many connections to this island that it is very easy to go on holiday or even to head back to North America. So between technology and flights, definitely don't feel cut off or remote from the rest of the world. And when you think about it, when we think about towns and cities back in North America, so many of them don't have really anything else around them. And in a sense, even though they're on the mainland, they're actually cut off from everything where else. You have to fly places or go on super long car drives to get anywhere. So in that sense, even mainland places can be an island where for us, Madeira does not feel cut off or isolated from the world. So myth number one, for sure not. We, the reality is that we feel connected and part of the world. We absolutely do not feel isolated unless we choose to be. So whether you're retiring, working remotely, you will not feel isolated on an island like Madeira. Myth number two, 
Moving to an island means sacrificing career and educational opportunities. In reality, Madeira is thriving. The city itself of Funchal is 150,000 people plus tourists with thriving restaurants, businesses, infrastructure, and culture. Some people come here and work remotely, some find employment, some people just start their own business, and some are retired, like us, and just kind of work. Plus, the unique cultural experiences and natural beauty of an island like Madeira can itself inspire creativity and growth. There are opportunities for both career and education. You just have to find them or make them. Myth number three, that living on an island means feeling confined and restricted by limited space. So, of course, all islands around the world are different sizes, and maybe on some very small islands that may be true. But on an island the size of Madeira, we absolutely do not feel restricted or that there is limited space. There's such diverse landscape here on Madeira that you can be near the ocean one minute, up in the mountains another, and in a forest another minute. So there's so many different places to go. And when you think of even living on the mainland where we lived in a city in North America and where you tend to drive to, how far you end up really exploring away from your home, it's usually within driving distance. And for us from here in Funchal where we live, driving distance is amazing on the island. There's so many different locations to drive to, to spend the day and then drive back to Funchal that we definitely do not feel like island life is confining or that we are restricted for space. So that's a myth. Myth number four, that retiring on an island or living on an island means limited access to resources, goods, and services. So while it's true that some islands may face challenges in terms of accessibility, getting goods, getting services, or higher costs for all that, we're not that far from the mainland, and that's a key thing. If you're out in the middle of the ocean, too far from anywhere, it could be really expensive to get goods and services. Many islands, such as Madeira, boast good infrastructure with a strong, steady pipeline of goods and services coming in, which makes it easy for anybody looking to retire on an island or have island life somewhere with easy access to everything. On the island of Madeira, for example, the grocery stores, the fruiterias, the farmer's markets are packed with fresh produce, fresh dairy, fresh fish, you name it. So much of it is produced locally here and is just delicious and fresh. As compared to being shipped in, we can get all the products we need here, everything that we need, and some of the things that we don't are left off. For example, the EU has regulations against certain additives and preservatives, so things like coffee creamer, Ritz crackers, frosted flakes, maraschino cherries, those type of things are banned here in the EU, so you don't find them, and you're better off for it, you're healthier. But you can get vegetarian options, vegan options, gluten-free options, everything that you need here. So you're definitely not isolated in that sense on this island. Another area that might give pause to some people is in the area of modern healthcare. Some smaller islands, some isolated regions maybe do not have access to good health care because they are too isolated. On bigger or more developed islands such as Madeira, health care is not an issue. While there are some older health care centers here just like there are anywhere else, they also have modern access to a wide range of services and they're building a brand new teaching hospital for the region. It's going to be massive. Although there may be some treatments that are best done elsewhere, that's the same for anywhere, any smaller center or city, whether that's in North America or the rest of Europe. So we do not feel like we have limited resources or go without. We definitely don't feel like we're sacrificing. Healthcare is not really an issue here. Myth number five, island life means dealing with extreme weather conditions and natural disasters. In reality, there are some islands that may be part of a hurricane belt or may have some of those kind of things going on in terms of extreme weather. Here in Madeira, that is not the case. We get plenty of sunshine and warm weather year round. Of course, at times it does rain, we do get Atlantic depressions that come through, and it does cool down sometimes in the winter months. But for the most part, it is spring, summer-like weather year-round. And if you're like us, that you lived eight, nine, ten months of your life in frigid temperatures in North America, and the summers were sweltering with mosquitoes, then that kind of weather is very appealing, and island life here in Madeira gives that to you. Myth number six. Moving to an island, retiring on an island, means paying exorbitant prices for everyday goods and housing. In reality, not every island is like that. While it's true that some islands, because of their isolation or limited infrastructure, may have higher costs for these sorts of things, bigger and more developed islands such as Madeira are very affordable. As you know from our many cost of living episodes that we've done, Madeira offers affordable housing, affordable groceries, and affordable services. 
In fact, much more affordable than back in North America. Even with the exchange rate, we are paying far less here as far as cost of living. We absolutely feel that our island offers affordability and true value. Myth number seven, that island life means that you have to sacrifice cultural experiences and diversity. The reality is that is so not true. Here on an island our size, Madeira, there are so many different cultural experiences to take part in. Of course, we have festivals and events going on, but there's also many restaurants, local cuisine, foreign cuisine. There's museums, there's galleries, there's art shows, there's cinema, there's theater. You can't run out of things to do here. And that's not even including, obviously, all the nature experiences that an island provides. So we absolutely do not feel like we are missing out on any cultural experiences and the diversity is here within the island. All different parts of the island have a different feel. There's lots of different people from different places here. And here on Madeira, an island about this size, you would not feel like you're missing out. Island life offers endless opportunities. You just have to choose what you want to do. Myth number eight, that living on an island means feeling isolated from community and support networks. So on the contrary, Living on an island fosters strong bonds and a sense of belonging, not only among the locals, but also among us expats. So whether it's through community events like many mentioned, sporting events, cultural events, or just seeing the same people at a cafe or restaurant, people connect here. There's definitely a feeling of, we are all on this island together, surrounded by ocean. Definitely Madeira Island Life brings people together in meaningful ways, creating a supportive and welcoming environment and makes us feel like we are a part of something. Myth number nine is that living on an island limits your access to outdoor activities and recreational activities. The reality is, make no mistake about it, just because it's an island, you are not limited with what recreational activities you want to participate in or outdoor activities. There are so many to choose from. From simply walking to hiking to boating to exploring many different towns and different flora and fauna, there's everything available on this island. And I'm sure many islands are like that, that they offer outdoor experiences, endless opportunities for outdoor activities and recreational activities. And myth number 10, living on an island means sacrificing quality of life just to have natural beauty. In reality, it is quite the opposite. When we combine all the previous nine points, the quality of life here is robust. There's so much to do. We do get the natural beauty in the Levada walks and the ocean and the drives and the mountain hiking. But we also get the vibrant life of the city and all the other small towns of the culture, of the people, of the restaurants. We haven't sacrificed anything. We have just gained all this natural beauty year round. And that can be the real gem of moving to an island, especially one like Madeira. And there you have it. We've dispelled the top 10 myths about living on an island as we share our reality, our retirement here on an island, the island of Madeira. When you take into account technology and ease of transportation, it is a much more global world in that sense. And I would have to say that our lifestyle, our way of living here has been amazing comparatively. We do not feel isolated or cut off in any way. We absolutely feel that our quality of life has improved moving to this beautiful island of Madeira and has definitely not gone down despite the natural beauty and the natural beauty, you can't dismiss how important it is to see beautiful things every day. Every day to see the beautiful city of Funchal and the mountains in the background. And the endless blue sky and clouds going by is, is just a dream to see every day. You might find that in many other places, but where besides an island do you get mountains and ocean and everything all together all the time? And that idea of people coming together on an island that Doug talked about, that is definitely a vibe among expats for sure, where you make friends and you kind of feel like we're all here to support each other. But as you're here longer, we've been here almost three years. As we connect with locals, we are starting to have that even with locals where we all feel like we're part of something and we're supportive of each other and we're checking in on one another. And that gives that whole feeling of building community. And I think islands do a great job of that feeling of building community. And just to bring it back full circle, it's so old fashioned the way we used to think of island life as being isolated, nothing to do, far away from everybody, maybe somewhere that you would only go as a vacation. It's not like that. You can live life to the fullest if you choose wisely. So island fever, nah, it's not a thing. But I got the right shirt for it. 
Thank you so much for spending a little bit of your day with us today. And as always, check back in and track us down.